Someone in your inner circle of trusted friends has committed an unforgivable act that only you are witness to. He doesn't know you who you are aware of what happened. You decided death is the only proper punishment for what he did. There is no other way. Would you take care of him secretly or discuss his fate with others and burden them as well? You were told by your scouts that a gang in a large caravan <coughs> is headed your way and your community leaders identify a choke point where you could easily kill them all. It is well known that the gang travels with women and children and to ambush them would mean the death of innocence for sure. Your camp would be overwhelmed if you let them through due to their large numbers though. Would you sacrifice their innocent in order to save yours? List five crimes punishable by death in a post-apocalyptic world that in the world today do not carry that sentence. Hey guys, uh, welcome back to Prepping in Progress. This is your Wednesday morning prep talk and I'm Steve. So why did we play a little game of conflicted in the intro. Well, to make you think, to throw some uh, thoughts into your heads and maybe even stir up some controversy in the comments. Here's the thing. Yes, I'm shuffling the cards. Um, over the last week, there have been multiple comments and questions on various uh, web groups that I, I participate in. Hey, I'm on my way to meet some people thinking about starting a group. What should I ask? Um, how should I get to know these people? Any thoughts or ideas? Wish me luck. Well, here are my thoughts on that yes you need a group um, let's say the balloon goes up I'll trade with lone wolves I will be friendly to them as long as they don't try to take what's mine I mean hey let's all try to get through this somewhat together but if you're thinking of starting a group my philosophy is look at it like dating. You have three phases, dating, courtship, and marriage. You also have only two possible outcomes for a dating relationship. You either get married or you break up. I don't know of any relationship between a man and a woman that has ended in any other way. Feel free to educate me if you wish. So let's take a look at this. Dating. I'm speaking to both the men and the women who are watching, but mostly to the men because I, I empathize and I understand a little bit better. The first time you go on a date with someone or you ask a, someone out on a date, you've got the butterflies in your stomach, you're nervous. Will they say yes? Will they say no? And you get up the courage and you ask them out. Because you think you're compatible, but you don't know. And on that first date, you're getting to know them. You are feeling each other out, you know, what color do you like? You know, what's your favorite dessert? What's your favorite food? You know, you're looking for commonality. You know, what do you think about the State of the Union? What do you think about the current economic situation? And you're looking for someone who has thought processes that intrigue you, 
someone who is willing and able to argue with you and hold a good argument and conversation. Um, not necessarily to be a yes dear person and just always say you're right. That's kind of what a first meetup should be. You should be nervous. You should be apprehensive. You should be asking people questions and getting to know people, not just on a acquaintance level, but seeing if they are compatible with your thought process. And they don't have to agree that the SHTF event will be an EMP or that it will be the Yellowstone Supervolcano or that it will be the New Madrid fault line. You know, they can believe that it is the reptilian aliens trying to take over the world as long as you believe that the outcome will be the same. I mean, I like a good conspiracy theory as, as much as the next guy or more. Believe me, I, I love reading them and studying them. So that first encounter, you're feeling each other out, you're getting to know each other. And it could be an hour, it could be 20 hours. You know, just how long? It could be the guy at the supermarket you've known forever and suddenly you realize he's one of us. So approach it with the attitude in mind, I'm getting to know this person. Be aware of minor irritants that only seem like an itch on the back of your neck right now, but three years later, you're going to be scratching a furrow back there to try to make it go away. Because you are setting things up for a long-term partnership, relationship, whatever you want to call it. Okay. So we've passed the initial shake my hand phase. We're moving on to courtship. We're feeling each other out, making sure that, you know, everything is lined up. Is this other person actually storing the food that he says he is? Is this other person actually setting aside the ammo that he says he is? Is he able to hunt like he says he is? How many people is he going to bring in? And we start getting into deeper um, questions and issues. Philosophically, you want to find out if his belief system, his moral code, is similar to you to yours. And you might have started out, you know, on your first or second meeting playing the conflicted game sitting there and throwing what-if scenarios at him, at his wife, at his kids, and seeing how they react. And they're seeing how you react. And you are balancing and figuring out, can I live with this person? You know, um, we once played the game with our kids. And my daughter is a sweet little angel, daddy's girl. And my son is a 16-year-old teenager. And I was expecting one set of answers from him and one set of answers from her. And he was actually the very thoughtful, emotionally driven, sincere, willing to give the shirt off his back even if his team it would hurt his team and his family my daughter was willing to send the people who might be raiders to the neighbor's house <laughs> it surprised me greatly 
but you can do this, you know, play this game. Um, play what if scenarios as you begin to feel out the moral code of the people you're thinking of actually forming a community, forming a tribe with. Another thing to roll out in the back of your mind is religion. Some people cannot stand opposing religious beliefs. And if that is the type of person that you're dealing with, you might not be able to work with them long term. Um, there are others who have, while differing religious beliefs, they have a moral code and a respect others code that allows for the interaction. I have an adopted uncle who is an agnostic and I'm a Christian. And we can debate religion all day long. I can put up a Facebook post or send him a religious email and watch the steam roll out of his head as he begins to explain to me why my mythical sky being um, could not possibly exist. And we enjoy debating. We'll never convince each other of our opposing beliefs. But when it comes down to it, he respects my right to have an opinion, my right to believe as I choose, and I respect his. And that is the key. If you're going to enter into a long-term sustainable relationship with someone of an opposing view, you must have respect. You must recognize if you're the Christian that whether or not he or she is, they have the inalienable rights given to them by God to have those opinions. So you put all this together and you figure out if you can work with him, if you can live on the same piece of property with him and his family, you take a look if you are, say, a Sabbath keeper, a, a Torah keeper, and your friend is a Christian Sunday keeper. Can he respect your Sabbath? and even choose not to do any work on the same piece of property, whether it's his property that he's bought, your property that you've bought, or a mutual piece of property. Can you respect his Sunday? You have to look at these things and see how you're gonna to work together, how you're going to synthesize into a cohesive unit. And all this is going on during what I would call the courtship phase. You've gone past, hey, I like this guy, our personalities mesh, we can work together, to, okay, we're slowly building something, but we're still figuring out if this is sustainable. Because once you have gone past that point, once you have made that determination, that this partnership, this relationship, this association is moving into a cohesive unit. There's no going back. In our relationships, some people believe in divorce, some people don't. In an SHTF scenario, the bomb has gone off, the balloon has gone up, the super volcano has gone off, whatever you want to, to choose as the possible event. You're on your property, you are sustain, sustaining yourselves. You cannot really comfortably divorce yourself from that person that you have chosen to associate with. You are now stuck with someone with a personality you can't stand. 
someone with a belief system that they are now trying to impose upon you and your butting heads constantly. And what? They're going to take half of the supplies and leave. You're going to take half of the supplies and leave. You both invested time, money, blood, sweat, and tears into this property. And you can't do that once the balloon's gone up. So a beginning is a very delicate time. I would approach the meet and greet phase with these thoughts and these phases of the evolution of a team in mind. Now that brings us to some closing thoughts and some closing arguments. Um, I'm a part of what is called the Arkansas Preparedness Network. It's a very good organization that sets up meet and greets throughout the state and they do classes, um, food storage, water purification, solar. Um, I believe there's been talk of having an orienteering class. I'd really like to take that because I need to refresh my skills. So you show up, you take the class, you mingle in between, shake hands, you know, hey, I'm from this part of Arkansas, hey, I'm from that, that part of Arkansas, and you get to know people and figure out, you know, hey, he's only two hours away from me, he's four hours away from me. You meet people that you may never choose to set up anything with except for being acquaintances and talk to and become friends with, but you're long distance friends. You're not within an hour or two or communicating. However, let's say the balloon goes up and you're 500 miles south of where you need to be and you need to trade for some supplies or you need help repairing your car. Oh, hey, I know Joe from such and such a town. You know, put in a call on the ham radio, put in a call on the CB, put in a call you know, through your cell phone if it's still working. Approach quietly with your hands up and hey, you know, can you use some help? You know, can I trade? Can I give you some work for what I need? You're slowly building a network, whether it is your diehard group or someone you know across the state. Now that is one example of how to do things. If you are looking for a group and there isn't anything like that in your state, start one. Um, start in your local town. Get on Facebook, the marketplace, and go, hey, you know, we're going to have a class on canning at the local library. We're just going to talk it over. Or, you know, find a church and say, hey, can I borrow your kitchen for a day? You know, I want to do a class on canning. You know, we'll pay a little bit for the rental of the building and, you know, bring your own veggies and let, and meats and let's do, let's do canning and, and talk about canning. And while you're doing that, talk about preparedness. Um, do a class on, if you're in Tornado Alley, you know, what would you put in a basement shelter? and meet people. And maybe no one will show up the first two or three times. Maybe no one shows up five times. If not, you're out a little money, but you put the word out there and you put a buzz in someone's ear. Now, as I said, the group that I belong to is mostly a statewide group. However, I'm going to put this down in the um, description box. They are starting a MeWe page for the National Readiness Network. And they are trying to bring in people from the different states so that you all can network together. Um, eventually, I'm sure they would love to see it be international for my German friend who was watching the live stream the other day. And for our friends in Ireland and our friends in the UK, um, you know, our friends in Ohio and our friends in Alaska and our friends in Washington State come together there and begin to see if you know anyone 
because it's not just my people that I'm encouraging to come over to that site. There are many others who are putting the word out slowly. Now this site is small. I think there are 10 of us right now. We're slowly building it, but come and check it out. Um, throw in your two cents, throw up your memes, throw up your comments, throw up your questions. Um, I think I put one up just today. If you could ask a blacksmith anything you wanted to, what would you ask him? So come on over and answer that question. So anyway, those are where I would go if you were thinking of starting your own group and expanding. And I think uh, I'd like to hear your comments. So uh, this was your Wednesday morning prep talk. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe if you think it was worth it. And we'll talk to you this weekend. Have a great week, guys.